This was me in high school. I studied for 16 hours a day and worked on a crazy schedule. Even though my grades were good, I didn't have a life. I lacked sleep and I was stressed all the time. Eventually, I was so burned out that I actually failed one of the most important exams in my life. And this was me in college. I didn't study as much and I actually spent a lot of time on the things I loved with the people I loved. However, I still got good grades even though the content was actually harder. Things changed because I learned how to study fast and I learned how to spend my time more efficiently. So after years of trial and error, in this video, I will share my tips on how to study more efficiently and manage my time better. These tips got me through my college years at Columbia University, helped me get A's in some of the hardest classes. The last tip is my secret to learn anything just in 20 minutes. So let's just get into it. So when I was in high school for the history exam, I needed to memorize about 500 different economics, political and cultural historical events. To help me memorize and understand them better, I decided to create a giant timetable, provide a huge timeline, but with all the historical influence factors on them. So I spent about two hours a day analyzing and summarizing the information and write them on a giant paper. Even though it was a lot of work, but I thought it was the most helpful thing that I have ever done. I felt like I was on the top of the world. And about after three weeks, having spent about 40 hours on this project, I have completed about one third of the giant timetable. During a conversation with a friend from another school, I mentioned my project to her. And to my surprise that she said, oh, there's my school actually have a book that have something similar to what I described. So she gave me a copy of the book and I was shocked because it's exactly everything I wanted. This this book have like a comprehensive timetable that categorized all the different effects, states, and even included common testing points. So at that moment, I felt like I wasted a lot of time. I have been trying to create my own study guideline while there were actually already a study guidelines prepared by a team of professional educators who dedicated their entire career to researching and publishing these study guides. So since then, I never start studying and working on a new project project without looking for the best materials and did my research first. The most important lessons I learned from that is always do your own research and found the best resources to learn and study rather than just diving into it. It is okay to spend five hours to do the research and finding the right resources. Instead of starting with the first thing you find, it can potentially save you 40 hours or more in the long term. The truth is, if you're not doing groundbreaking work, there must be plenty of studying materials on the topic you are studying and you definitely should utilize them like textbook summaries, cheat sheets, and practice exams. If you feel overwhelmed and spend a lot of time studying but still not getting the grades you want, take a moment to reflect and think about are the things you're currently working on aren't worth it or they're not worth your time. Lots of time we just keep doing things and trying to run as fast as we can and actually forget to think through if running is the best way. Maybe there is a car just right there that we can use. One time management tip I have been using is that when I'm doing mindless work like cleaning or going for a walk, I always listen to something, whether it's a podcast or an audiobook. Lately, I have been doing this for my YouTube channel. Sometimes I research scientific papers about learning techniques because most of my tips I share on this channel, I want to have some science to back them up. And a game changer is listening.com, which is very kindly sponsoring this video. I really wish I would have known about listening when I was in college, it would have been so, so helpful for me. So listening can turn any academic papers or textbooks into audio and read them to you. When I was in college, I needed to write a lot of papers and being able to listen to papers would have been saved me so much time. I can just picture myself walking around campus, listening to some papers for my next class because my classrooms are so far away from each other usually. I always had to walk so much and wasted so much time. Listening can detect chapters and automatically skip citations and footnotes. It can also read math equations and data tables, which is so, so cool. Figure 5 Stat 3 Activation 
in reactive inflammatory and it has this one click note taking feature so when you hear an important sentence or a paragraph you can immediately just mark it down and take notes on your mobile phone so if you want to start saving some time by checking out listening use my link in the description box to get three weeks of a free trial i think compared to normally you only get two weeks so thank you so much listening for sponsoring this video As a planning girly, I love making plans like this in my calendar. If I put everything I want in the calendar, I can make a perfect schedule. I can accomplish so many things in just one day. However, if I can just follow everything in my calendar, then my life won't have any problem. I will get up at seven, do my skincare routine, go to the gym, read, study, work, and have multiple hobbies. I can achieve everything I want if I can just follow the calendar, the perfect calendar. But the problem is that when I plan all these things, I often end up either procrastinating or spending extra long on one task so i end up not finishing these things on my calendar if lucky i can do one or two things in that day so i learned that instead of managing my time what i should manage is my energy so here is how i manage my energy and plan my day so i categorize things i want to do or need to do into four categories the first one is things that i look forward to and actually bring me energy afterward for me those things are like my hobbies painting swimming or like hanging out with my closest friends and the second one is things that I look forward to but it actually drain me energy after I do this thing. For example, like playing on my phone, eating very unhealthy but tasty food, binge watching some Netflix shows. The third category is things I do not look forward to, but it actually bring me energy afterwards, like going to the gym or studying or learn something new. And the last category is things that I do not look forward to and it drain my energy afterwards. These are usually mindless work that I do not want to do but I kind of have to like do my taxes so I recommend you go grab a pen and paper and just write down all the things and events that you're trying to fit in into your calendar and you categorize them into these four categories there are another important thing that I learned is typically our energy declines from morning to evening this means we have the most energy and more motivation in the morning because we are well rested and we lose more energy throughout the day our ability to motivate ourselves is it's getting lower and lower and it's easier to cave into the temptations at night like playing on your phone or having midnight snacks so with that being in mind i usually do the things i do not look forward to and bring me energy afterwards in the morning when i have the most energy and it actually bring me energy to start the day and i will usually do the things i look forward to but drink my energy afterwards at the end of the day as just something i enjoy because it's easy i want to do them anyway and i can just go to bed afterwards. I will not do those things first thing in the morning, even though I really look forward to them, but it will drain my energy. So I will fill the rest of the day with things that I do not look forward to and drain my energy and the things I look forward to and bring me energy, which just kind of depends on your schedule. The fastest times I've learned something completely new have been those incidences where I've been thrown into the deep end, like when I forgot about a presentation, I only had 20 minutes to prepare before delivering it to the whole class. But in such situations, the time limit forces me to put something together very quickly. And typically, I'll start by grasping the basics. What is this thing? When is it? How it works? Just to have the most basic understanding. And when under such time constraints, there's no luxury to get lost in all the details or to procrastinate. It's about figuring out what is the most important or the core or the essentials of the topic we're learning. If it's for a history event, then the core is like what happened, when did it happen, who was involved. If it's something like math, then the core is what is the definition and what is one single example that we need to learn to use the thing. Because on the contrary, if I have all the time in the world, I might found myself drowning into tiny details which can lead to procrastination and a lack of focus like sometimes i read one page for 30 minutes just stared at the page but still i don't know what this chapter is about 
Pareto principle or called the 80-20 rule. It means roughly 80% of the outcomes came from 20% of the effort. So instead of getting caught up in the small details, focus your energy and time on those most impactful 20%. So the next time you need to learn something quickly, try to give yourself a time limit and try to make a presentation about what is the most basic and important thing you need to know and imagining that you are going to present it where you're going to teach it to someone else. This is also famous. It's called Feynman technique. It basically means you can understand something more deeply when you're teaching it to someone else. If you're like me and always enjoy listening to something while you're doing other mindless work, I highly recommend you check out listening using the link in my description box. Also, I started posting more on my Instagram about study tips, my daily life, and some behind the scenes content. So feel free to follow me on Instagram if you want to see more from me. Well, that's today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Love you. Bye.